All right. Colossians chapter 1. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, it has been a a good week, Lord. It's been a a week that you ordered for us. Father, you put things in in place and we have faced them as they have come. You have met us in our in our time where we have approached you, you have uh, allowed blessings and you've allowed smiles to come across our face. Lord, uh, there are other things that uh, life has brought us as well, but Lord, you have watched over all of those things. And Father, you have um, uh, allowed me the privilege of spending some time in your word. And Father, I want to bring uh, to these people tonight that which uh, you have shared with me. I pray, Lord, that they will get more than just the overflow. Lord, that they would get the, the, the freshness that comes from you. Father, for your word brings healing. It brings peace. Your word brings understanding. And Lord, even as we will look at tonight, brings knowledge. But Father, it's because it comes with your presence. With you, O Lord, we have the answers. With you, O Lord, we have the uh, the spirit that comes with the answers, the joy and, and Lord, the love and the peace. I thank you for friends, Lord. I thank you for friends who live their life in the abundance of knowing you. And Lord, I thank you for the friends that are, are still struggling with deficits, with uh, the obstacles and the difficulties and the hardships and the pains. Father, they both, both uh, bring blessings to me. And Lord, uh, I just... Uh, so much want your will to be done in my life and in the life of these people that we call New Holland Baptist Church. For those that uh, come out on a Wednesday night, for those that are watching us online, or maybe we'll watch this sermon at some point in time in the future, I pray that your spirit will be felt all throughout, whether they're in this building or watching us online. Because, Lord, you're the only one that can draw us to the richness of your grace. So, Lord, just uh, speak to us personally. And sir, we'll give you the honor and the glory for it. In your name we do pray. Amen. Colossians chapter number 1. I'm not going to really get into a hurry when we're going through this. Um, So um, we're going to take some time. Uh, I'm not going to try not to take longer. I'm I'm cutting my verses short. Deborah, you're going to, Deborah's going to share a testimony. She was on a mission trip over the past weekend. She's going to come share a a uh, story about that, and then we'll have our prayer time at the end. But um, the book of Colossians, let me remind you, Paul was writing to a newborn church, and they had needs in their life that they didn't realize that they had. There were things that were there, but they probably didn't know all the, uh, the reasons why they were having to go through those things. There were some people that were, uh, did not have their best interest at heart, I, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll say that they were confused. Obviously, they were. But maybe they were doing it because they thought that they were helping, but they were actually hurting by spreading some things that were different from the knowledge of knowing Jesus Christ. What we need, what we desperately need, what I think our heart wants is to have a, a, an understanding of that which is good, right, perfect, blessing, clear, that which is is God's best for us, there will be a day when we will say goodbye to this world and we will see him face to face. We will not have to pray in that day, Lord, teach us. We will not have to pray in that day, Lord, give me more understanding. Lord, help me to please you more. It will be there. We'll have it all. We will walk in the peace of the glory of God. We will will know as we are known. We will will be there to uh, fully understand and fully encourage and live in that peace. But we're not there yet. So in this world that's, I mean, there's many ways you can describe it. It's a depraved world. It's a hard world. It's a broken world. And yet we have the spirit of love living within us. God has us here to be his light, to be his love, to be his encouragement, to be his help, 
So as we walk through this world, we're going we're to go through some things. We're going to see some things. We're going to understand some things. But, but in the process, we're going to go from where we were, broken, dirty, rotten sinner, and we're on the process of going to where we're going to be, perfect in Christ in heaven. And in the meantime, we're going we're gonna to have the ups and downs of learning those things. Does that make sense? We're not there yet, but we're on our way. And God prayed for you this morning. Before you woke up, God prayed for you. Before you drove to church, God prayed for you. Right now, you're on his mind and his heart. And he wants to do great and mighty and wonderful things in our life. That's just the kind of God we serve. Amen? So what we need to do is open up to all the things that God perfectly has planned for us. Now, it's not going to seem like that tonight because we're going to talk about some things that are going to blow your mind a little bit. I know that's not the proper way of saying it. You're going to, you're going to hear some things tonight and you're going to say, preacher, that's good preaching, it's hard living. It's going to sound too good to be true. And somewhere in the, in the line of this, by faith, because the only way you're going to grasp this is by faith. By faith, you're going to grab a hold of God and say, yes, Lord, for me, I stand in need of your prayers. I so want this in my life. So it's going to be okay for you to, 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 to say, I'm not there yet. It's going to be okay to, to look at his word and say, I haven't experienced that yet. But that doesn't change the truth of it. How many of you know that, well, I'll even go beyond that. Not only know, but believe and know that there's more of this than you're living. And probably more here than you're living. And probably even more here than you're living. And that's the encouragement. That's why we need church. That's why we need Bible study. That's why we need friends. That's why we need accountability. That's why we need, we need all of those things to come together. So Paul is talking to this young church. Hasn't been there yet. They, they've heard about him. One of Paul's students led them to the Lord. And, and the, the power of the gospel has been happening all over this city of Colossae. And people have been coming to know the Lord. Others are trying to say, no, 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 that's not true. But they've got to find it out for their own heart in their own life. And that's what we're finding. So I'm going to begin in verse 9. We're not going to stay there long because we've already covered verse 9 and verse 10. And I may mean towards verse 11, but I want to get a running start. Amen? Verse 9. For this reason, this is the point. We also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. We need the encouragement. We need all that we are uh, here together. I'm praying for you. I pray that you're praying for me. I want you to grow. And you need to be praying that your pastor grows. I want more of God's blessings for you, and we want these for each other. So we're all in this together. We do not cease to pray for you and to desire to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. I want you to know everything that comes with the will of God. Jeremiah 29, 11 says he knows the plans that he has for us. Do you know he has a plan for you? He created you for such. He gifted you for such. He's called you for such. He's put those plans in place that you're going to walk through it. You're going to face some things today where his will can be perfected in your life. Satan knows that. So Satan's going to seek to put things in your life to get you away from that. So you need to know God's will. Do I need to say that again? As we're walking through this and we're seeing everything that we face in the day, God's got a perfect will for you there. So we need to know what that is. He says, be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom. That is a word for general knowledge, but also spiritual understanding. Specific, specific understanding of his will. Very, very specific. That you may walk worthy. That the way in which you walk 
is with the full grasp of what God has for you. The word worthy means of the same way. Everything that God has, he wants for you. I'm going to say that again. Everything in God's perfect wisdom, in his perfect love, right? And his greatest desire, he's, he, is, he has gifted you. He's placed you here. This is not by accident. You were born where you're born. You're living where you're living. You have the parents that you have. You have the DNA that you have. You have been surrounded by people that you have become that have become friends and encouragers. We're in this together as a church to do these things together to see and to know, because God is wanting to do a, a very specific thing, right? That we can be fully pleasing, pleasing to God, pleasing to ourselves, pleasing to others. Just to feel good. How many of you have had a terrible day, but you knew it was a God-blessed day? Nobody? I mean, it's terrible to go through a terrible day and get to the end of it and say, woe is me, I am undone, I, I, this was a waste. But to know that God was there and God, God had his hand in it. If you're going through something, you want to know that God's there with you, right? So we're... Our behavior is to be worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing. Listen to this now. Being fruitful in every good work. Do y'all believe that? Do you believe that we're being fruitful for every good work that he has planned for us? How many of you, how many of you believe that your fruit died on the vine? Uh, did y'all get a frost this morning? My goodness, we got a frost this morning. In our place... Now, until then, we have, by, we have tomatoes outside, and tomatoes are actually a perennial. They'll come up every year. Matter of fact, if you're in a warm climate, they'll just continue on. They don't ever die. That's just who they are. But where I live, it's cold. And I looked out this morning, and I laughed because there were some poor tomatoes trying their very best. And I'm like, you're doomed. You don't know it yet, but you're doomed. The frost is here. You have been bit. How many of you feel like your life has been bit? Sometimes. Sometimes we don't feel that God has, we feel like there's some kind of a disconnect from God's perfect, holy, divine will, the great desire of his love for us, and what's happening in our life. So he says to these people, he says, that you will be uh, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in your knowledge, your understanding, your, your, your personal relationship with God. Y'all look up here. God is far more interested in, in, in Christ in you. My, one of my favorite verses, verse 27. Christ in you than what comes from your hand. Obedience is better than sacrifice. If you're seeking to count your own fruit or inspect your own fruit, you're not the right judge for that. I believe there's some things that God has allowed into my life that he knew I was going to blow it. But yet he was going to be there to teach me, to encourage me, to to pick me up. Help me to learn. Now, I don't know about you, but we're pretty good about beating ourselves up over past failures. God wants to use anything and everything that we go through for the development in the in the in the the further nurturing of his power and will in our life. Now, we're to the verse that I wanted us to talk about. And I want, you to, I want you to grab a hold of this verse. As a matter of fact, it would really be a, a blessing to me if you read this verse a lot in the next week. Look at what it says in verse 11. Strengthened with all might. The word strengthened there and the word might are really pretty much the same word 
The one is a verb, strengthen, and one is a noun, might. Uh, I don't like to share all the Greek words to you, but I think it's important that I do this one. The verb is um, dunam mou. See, I can't even, I'm not a Greek. But the, the noun is dudamus. They both can be defined as power. It is a, an overwhelming power. Now, the verb means to have the power, like to be fully engulfed with this power. We are strengthened. We are being strengthened with might, which is the second word, the noun, which means inherent power, a power that resides simply in the nature of it. A lion has power because there are pow there's power in the nature of that lion. God has power because he is God, and inherently in God there is power. So he is saying, you need to be strengthened with all might, and the might that he's talking about there, the power that he's talking about there, is the power of God. When God says that you are sufficient, right? He means with Christ in you the hope of glory. When he says, I can do all things through Christ who what? He is saying it's not you, but you have become, you have availed yourself to an inherent power that is of God. Now let's just pause. This is the power that created the world. This is the power that sustains the world. There is power that is all around us that when I was meditating on this this morning, driving into work, and I'm thinking about that, and I'm looking at the beautiful sky, and I'm thinking of the trees, and, and, and this is in God's plan. This is fall, where the leaves are dying, but that's part of the plan. Because winter's coming, but what comes after winter? New growth in spring. And then you've got the harvest of summer. All of it's in his plan. I can't make that happen. You can't make that happen. But the God of all, all think of all those planets out there that are not playing ping pong balls. It's not, they're not bouncing off each other. God holds them together. This earth that we have is perfectly where God wants it to be. We're rotating exactly the way he wants it to be. If it were too much one way, we'd burn up. Too much the other way, we'd freeze to death. There is unbelievable power in the mighty hand of God, but he's saying that that power is there for us. We are to be strengthened with his might. It's going to get better. How much is all? All means all, and that's all all means, right? So when he says all power of God, that can mean anything that is needed, God is there. God is there. Um, Y'all think God is stingy? Do you think that God's afraid that if he gives you some of his power that he's going to run out? Do you think that he's rude or mean? Here, this is what you need, but I'm not going to let you have it. Obviously, none of those things we, we believe. And yet, as we face the, what we're about to talk about, the difficulties of life, we're going to say, no, 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 that's beyond me. When he says, strengthen with all might, according to God's power, God's glorious, doxa, the light of his glory. When we get to heaven, we won't have a sun, we won't have a moon, there will be no artificial light. There will be one light in heaven, his glory. The brightness of his glory. There will be no shadows. Because we will be fully in, 
engulfed in his glory. Are you good with that? So he says that you will be strengthened with all might according to the, the power that is fully there. This is who he is, and this is what he wants to do. For, this is the purpose of it. Now it's going to get tough. Patience and long-suffering. Patience deals with circumstances. Long-suffering deals with people. Patience means to remain under. To remain under. Y'all ever seen the, the, the they, they did a sculpture to that mythological person, not real person called Hercules, and he's got the earth on his shoulders? Y'all ever seen that sculpture, that picture? Have you ever felt like that that was you, that you were carrying all the burdens of the world on your shoulders? Or maybe you're just carrying all the burdens of your circumstances. All the hardships of what you're going through. All the difficulties that are there. And it's not just the money issues and the desire issues and the, the lust issues, the coveting issues. It, it, it's not just all of that wants and distresses. There's also people involved. I can deal with money issues a whole lot easier than I can if Lance got mad at me. That would hurt. So sometimes, what do you do when there's the difficulty of people? Now, if we're putting this perfectly in context, he is saying that he wants us to understand the full understanding, the full wisdom and knowledge of his will, because God's got a plan. And he's going to strengthen us to walk out that plan. And he's going to strengthen us to walk out that plan so that while we're in these circumstances and hardships and difficulties and battles and stresses, that he will give us all the power that is enabled that we need to face and to fulfill his plan in that circumstance. Now you may have just heard everything I said and believed everything I said, but there's part of you that says, well, well, I don't know. Does God call the enabled or does God enable the called? If you're in a circumstance, the one thing I know is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because it, he's got you there. No temptation has come upon us except that which is common to man. And with it, he has made a way of escape. All things work together for good. Not just the ultimate good, the best good. Yes, for that which is coming, but for that which is where I am now. This new church needed to know this. They have been taught by the Gnostics that an inferior God has allowing them to go through this and, and that they're supposed to have a greater understanding so that they can have power over these things. I'm just here to tell you, there are things that I'm facing I do not understand. I will never understand. We sing the song, we'll understand it better in the by and by. Well, amen, we'll understand it better then, but I don't know I'll understand all of it then. I don't understand abortion. I don't understand how anybody could not care for life like that. I don't understand that. I don't understand pedophiles. I don't understand that. I'll never understand that. I don't understand sin. Any of the bleak darkness of any of those sins. Now, those are some very gross sins that I just mentioned. But what about coveting? 
Isn't that sin? Stealing, stretching the truth. Yet God has a plan, a perfect plan, that we can be part of this world, uh, of, of being in this world but not of this world, of walking out the strength of God. So he says he's going to give us all power, all power, his power, so that we will be able to face all of those difficult circumstances that you're going to be going through, all of those difficult people that you're facing with joy. It'd be easier if he didn't add that last word in verse 11. If it were just, well, I don't like it and I'll just have to endure it and, and I'll just, go, for Jesus' sake, I'm just going to make it through. And yet, come on. Christ in you, the hope of glory. There will be no snarling people in heaven. Amen? I mean, it. Woo, it's going to be everybody's happy all the time. And yet, why? Because we're in the presence of the glory of God. But we now have the opportunity to be in the presence of the glory of God. So hold on. <laughs> he allows circumstances to happen so that we can be moved beyond our ability, so that we can avail ourselves to his ability. And he will overcome in that circumstance so we can not only have a greater understanding of his will, a greater understanding of his love, a greater understanding of his joy, but we can participate with it and experience it. So all those terrible people around you are a blessing from God. Love your enemies. Does anybody just love Matthew 5, 44, 45? I mean, don't you just wish you could just delete a little part of the Word of God? Pray for those who spitefully use you. Pray blessings on. Instead of being overcome by them, love them. Be patient. Suffer long. Suffer long. I know I don't, I'm supposed to, and I really don't want to, but pray blessings on them. Lord, bless them. Bless that old dirty, rotten rattlesnake. Just... Now, hold on. How good has God been to you? How patient has he been to you? How much of God's glory has he bestowed upon you? How much of the mercy have you received? How much of the goodness of God do you have? How grateful are you for all the things that God has for you? Don't you want that for them? So when you're praying for them, Lord, bless them. I want them to have what I have. I want them to understand joy like I have joy. I want them to know the love of God. Matter of fact, give them a double portion of it. You'll get along with them better if you pray for them. You want what's best for them. And doesn't that sound like the heart of Jesus? Wanting what's best for them? So instead of cursing them, bless them. Instead of judging them, support. Now, you have to tell the truth, but you got to do it in love. Jesus had how many people hanging around him all the time? I mean, 12 were there. We don't know how many beyond that were in and out. Did all of them get it? Did all of them have the opportunity? Did all of them get it in stages? Did all of them come with different personalities? Did all of them, did, do you think that, that Matt may have grow, grown um, in one circumstance where Andy grew in another? What about, oh, there was two Judases, wasn't there? 
I mean, they were all in there going through different things. And the same God wanted the best for all of them. And yet, with their difficulties and in their circumstances, God used them all for his great glory. Paul's writing this from jail. How many of y'all love Philippians? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. From jail! What about Corinthians where he says, hey, you've been hearing about my trouble. I'm telling you, it's a good thing. They keep chaining me to soldiers, but I'm telling you, soldiers are getting saved. As a matter of fact, the gospel's going to places that it would never have gone otherwise. Caesar's household is getting saved. Not what I would have wanted, not what I would have chosen. As a matter of fact, God had to put him in jail probably to slow him, slow him down so we could have half the New Testament. Let me read verse 11 again. I hope you read this a lot this week. To be strengthened with all the might of God. This is Brian's rendering. According to God's glorious power. So that for all patience, all long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us, made us qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. We get the inheritance of everything that comes from God. And by the way, he's delivered us from the power of darkness. <laughs> As we're going through this, we've got the power of God. We've been delivered from the power of darkness. We can, we can experience the glory of his joy and not the brokenness of sin. He's delivered us from the power of darkness and he's conveyed us into the kingdom of his sons of his love. How truly blessed we are to know him. That's what the word means, to experience him. And to go through things that will help us to know him better. And while we're in it, while it's hard, it is hard. While it's difficult, it's extremely difficult. While it's painful, when our feelings get hurt because of people, we get an opportunity to love. And that produces joy. Which is the fruit that remains. I told you when we started, you're going to say, that's good preaching, that's hard living. Sooner or later, we've got to grab hold of this and say, Lord, at the beginning of our day, thank you, O oh Lord. Let me pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you, O oh Lord, that you have uh, allowed us to live this day, that you have placed things in front of us. I know that there are uh, spiritual rulers in this world, spiritual dark darknesses that are all around us. There are miserable people. There are hurt people. Uh, there's just uh, sicknesses. There are all of these things. But Lord, we can bask in your love. We need you. Come and take us from where we are to where we need to be. Lord, from uh, the deficit of us to the glory of Christ, we're going to expect you to fill in the blank. We're going to expect you to make up the difference. We're going to expect you to come in and take us and qualify us so that we can live this type of life, so that we can live it for your glory. Lord, we can show others your peace. So, Lord, we can love like only you can love. And, Father, if we're not there yet, we're growing. And, Lord, thank you for letting us grow. So, Lord, uh, just continue to do a work that is a mighty work, that is a lovely work, that is a great work. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.